Hello everyone, Mr. Terminal here for Cloud Infrastructure Services. In this video, we are looking into deploying SFTP Secure Server on Google Cloud Platform. The market link for the following has been provided in the description. Please do check that. Once you have it, what we are going to do is launch it. It will check the APIs in case you get notification for APIs. Just You just have to enable them and you would get your configuration page so i'm going with the defaults as much as possible deployment name is okay everything is okay no need to touch the networking and we are going to go with deploy so deployment manager takes care of all, all the background stuff that you have to do if you're going to do manually but right now we are just going to have to wait until it is deployed so let me skip to until it is done great so our sftp secure server has been deployed and we can go get started right here or we can go to compute instance let's go to the compute instance and we're going to look at instances and we would have our sft server deployed this is the one that we just created and yeah we are going to connect with rdp download the rdp file and it's done before of course logging into the windows we need to set the windows password so you can use username this or let me just go with GCP user. That's our username. And password is something that will be created for you. So you just copy it and save it somewhere. And let's look at our download file. Open up the download file, connect. Once you go with, instead of default one, we are going to enter the credentials we just created. And it was GCP user, and our password was the one we copied. And OK. Yes. and this will start your windows and your sftp server will be on side it the first thing you want to do is run this free ftp server okay let me close this as an administrator make sure you're running it as an administrator right click it run as administrator and there it is once you start you can see the interface it's gui and what you want to do first is just a side note you can always click here to configure the settings okay so once it is open we can generate new, we have to generate new SFTP host keys. So here you want to go to the host key as can be seen here. And minimize it, I think. So it already provides you a path, so you can keep this as it is. Instead of CFG, let me just go for RSA. So I'm going to create it in the same folder it is mentioned. Let it be private key dot RSA. So yeah, that's the one. Make sure it is 1024 bits. Same for the DSA key. key. We're going to generate one. And 1024 bits, that one too. And yeah, this is the folder. 
private key dsa and that is that's it we're going to apply and save it next you want to do what we want to do is start the server itself so we're going to click on sftp and all this is perfectly fine for 22 all interfaces you can add something here welcome to sftp server in azure for example and goodbye message can be see ya uh, completely whatever you want and that would be the root directory that is fine and just click on start the server status is running so if we go to status the sftp server you would find that it is running great our next step would be adding users and there are three options to do that either you authenticate your local users with username and password or authenticate your active directory users next would be or you could choose to authenticate users with private public ssh keys for local users we would go to the computer management that's the one uh, in here we can go to you local users and groups let me just stretch that users and here as you can see my users are already added so i'm just going to add user a demo user demo for connecting whatever password is whatever you want to set oh, how did i mess that up no need and yeah create okay i didn't think that would be the case just let's create a strong password and done so our demo user is created but this is just created inside the local system we still have to configure this to our stuff our stp server so we are going to go back here in here you go to users and add a user here the name should be same obviously authentication should be nt authentication domain no need and just make sure you check the sftp server and apply and this is configured with your sftp server so that's how you add a local user as uh, and if you want to add active directory users what you will be do is add another user add the username according to the ad whatever it is any user mm. authentication would be anti authentication itself and here you you want to add your domain whatever it is so make sure that is added keep the home directory same and here make sure you check and uncheck s ftp server and only sftp server is checked apply and that's it your active directory user is added now if you want to authenticate with private or public keys via ssh 
So you have added option to allow users to connect to the server using a private key that communicates with a public key on the SFTP server. So what you want to do is go to this, this user section and we are going to create another user. Uh, let's call him SSH user. In here, instead of anti authorization, what we're going to do is select password stored as SSH one hash. Now, password, make a note of this again. This is important. This is used as catchphrase. Match phrase, catch phrase, in Cobra, whatever. And yeah, keep this as it is. That's perfectly fine. Again, make sure you uncheck FTP server and only FTP, SFTP server is checked. Apply and user now can SSH into this server. You will, of course, need to create a public key and a private key for each user. So you have on your desktop putty gen, that's what you're going to use. And here, let me just. Here, make sure you have RSCA selected. Then just press generate. Once it is generated, uh, keep the key passphrase you have to enter. It has to be the same one we entered for the user. The password we entered for the user in the SSH. So it has to be same, otherwise it will fail. We are going to save the key. The public key in the server folder that we have been using all this time. So it's in our this PC Windows C our files fifty six. Free FTPD, and here make sure you save it with the same username you have added, and it should not have any kind of extension. So, yeah, this is the public key we are saving, just remember that and save it. And we have to save the private key. This you can save it anywhere because this just goes to the user you will be connecting. So this is the one you give to the user. And this can have an extension. Right. And save it. We got that. And yeah, that's how <clears throat> that is configured. I just want to point out that first time a user connects, their home folder will be created in the following location. Inside this folder, there will be another folder named as SFT root. SFTP root, yeah. So in that, you can, in case a user experiences any issues in going to that file of the user, folder of that user, you can edit it. So no, no user has connected, so I don't have it, but just a side note. One more thing I want to add is if you are encountering problems connecting to it, so you want to edit the instance and here you want to add this default allow RT RDP network tag. This is the only problem that you might be encountering if you are not able to connect because the port is not allowed 
and this is a network tag this probably is created in your tcp if not you go to im admin sorry you go to vpc network and firewall and here is this is the one it should be there tcp3389 if not create one and allow ingress from three, tcp3389 and you're good to go if this video helped you please like and subscribe thanks for watching